So in examples uh, one and two, we kind of already talked a little bit about amplitude. Um, here what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, general equation for a sine or a cosine graph. And what you do is you have A's, B's, C's, and D's. And each of these uh, are a, they're, uh, have do something separate to each graph. So basically let's start with what we've already done, the A. And we've already talked about how this um, this is either your vertical shrink or your vertical stretch. This is also known as your amplitude. Okay, your amplitude is your vertical shrink, uh, shrink or stretch, and it's denoted by the absolute value of a. So that is from your origin or from the center of your graph, how far up or how far down you're going to go. Uh, next is the b value, and the b inside the parentheses. Sometimes you're going to have to factor it out. But the B, this is what we call the period of your graph. And we know that uh, for your sine and cosine, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the period would actually be a 2 pi. Now what happens sometimes is we throw a number in front of the x. And what you're going to do in order to figure out um, what the period is, you're going to take 2 pi and you're going to, whoops, you're actually going to take this 2 pi and you're going to divide it by B. So say you had a, a 3 in front of your x here for your sine and you put that 3 here and it's a 2 pi over 3 so that means your period instead of going from 0 out to 2 pi and have you know the sine graph that looks like this you're going to actually go from 0 to 2 thirds pi so you're going to shrink this graph and let's go, go from here down to here so in this case that would be a like a horizontal shrink um, sometimes you may have like a one half here, so maybe you get a one half for b. And you have two pi divided by a half, which is the same thing as a four pi. So instead of going from zero to two pi, you're going from zero to four pi, and this graph would stretch out. Still keeps its S shape, but it's just stretched out much further. God, those are horrible graphs, sketches. But you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> so the b is the period of the graph. Next up is c. And C is inside parentheses with your X, so that must mean that it's a, uh, a horizontal shrink, or sorry, a horizontal shift. Well, it is. And what, it's, what we call that is just a phase shift. Phase shift, that means we're taking your entire graph and we're shifting it left or right. Um, and then finally D, you notice that D is out here all by its lonesome, and it's not attached directly to, by multiplication to your sine or your cosine. That is your vertical shift. Okay, your vertical shift. That's shifting your graph up or down. So <coughs> you need to be uh, up to the hippity hop here on what these A's, B's, C's, and D's to your, do to your graph. Because keep in mind, they're going to keep the same shape, but these graphs can either be shrunk, uh, stretched, or all kinds, of, or uh, reflected, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So let's look at what the amplitude does to our graph. And we've actually already seen what the amplitude does. Okay, that's the number in front of your sign here. What that does is that represents the distance halfway between your maximum and min value. So basically, you take your graph. So say you have a sine graph like this. Okay, A is the distance from here to here. That's what A is. Okay, it's not the distance from the top all the way down to the bottom. That's not A. But it goes from uh, halfway from your maximum to your minimum distance. I, I call this kind of like the center line of your graph. So when I'm graphing, this is your A. Now this distance is the same from here to here as it is from here down to here. Um, <clears throat> so let's graph, for example, three. Um, we're going to have some uh, vertical stretching and shrinking. And if you notice, we have this two here. Well, this is probably going to give us a vertical stretch or shrink. Wow, no swearing. Jeez. That would be a stretch. Vertical stretch. And over here, we're going to actually have a vertical shrink. And this is, we've actually already graphed uh, something similar to these here. 
in example one and two, but what we're going to do is we're going to plot them on the same set of coordinate axes. So they're still going to be going from zero to two pi because we don't have a specific interval. So we're going to go from zero to pi over two, skip one to pi, skip one to three pi over two, and then we're at two pi. And we're going to need to go all the way up to two. So this will be one half, one, uh, 1.5, er, three halves. That's what I was trying to say. Three halves, and then this will be two. So this will be a negative one half, negative one, negative three halves, negative two. And this first graph, I'm going to graph this one in blue. So let's do this one in blue here. And what we're going to do um, when we graph this in blue is the sine shape, remember it still has your little S curve. We're going to start at the origin. There's your first point. Second point's out here at 2 pi. Middle point's at pi. Now it's going to go up. We just need to figure out how far up it goes. Well, this has a, an amplitude of 2. So halfway between 0 and pi, we're going to go up to 2. And so that's going to give us this part of our graph. Kind of looks like parabola, if you will. Facing down, well then, halfway between pi and 2 pi, we're going to need to go down to 2 pi, so we're going to go, or sorry, down to 2, so we're going to go down here, and up. And if you have two graphs on the same, um, same set of axes, you either need to label it, or you need to do it in different colors, that way I know, or whoever is grading your graphs knows what it should look like. Um, we're going to graph B in red. And if you notice, this is going to have a halvesy. Okay, so your amplitude is a half. You're still going to start at the same point. Still start at zero here. End at 2 pi. In the middle, it's the same point. But instead of going up to and down to for your A, you're going to go up a half, halfway in between zero and pi. And then you're going to go down a half. So this graph is vertically shrunk. So it's down through here, over and up. Voila! So look what the two things do, because your normal graph would actually um, be going through, start at the same points, okay, if you didn't have any vertical shrinking or stretching, and it would be going through each of these points. So here would be your just y equals sine of x. But notice the blue graph is stretched too. The uh, red graph is just stretched by, or shrunk by a half. It takes your gray graph and shrinks it by a half. So this would be just y equals sine of x. And then the red one, that is y equals one half sine of x. So that's what your amplitude does to your sine graph.